for the first time on African soil, the Forbes Under 30 Capitec Meter brought together some of the freshest change makers on the continent, all under the age of 30, to connect and showcase some of their incredible ideas and businesses making waves. So we've had the Forbes uh, 30 Under 30 list for the last three years. This is our fourth annual edition, which came up in June. From this year, we've started calling it the Under 30. So that kind of broadens the, uh, the whole grouping of the, the under 30. Previously, we only had 30 people under the age of 30. And now we've kind of expanded it to not just include business, but also technology and the creative sectors. So which means this, this time we had 90 entrepreneurs under the age of 30. Now today's particular event follows Forbes Africa's super successful June issue in which they took a moment to highlight the brightest entrepreneurs on the African soil under the age of 30. Hence, today will be a day in which we share ideas and inspiration, a day of pop-up talks, a day of panel discussions, and mostly it will be attended by an audience of past and present under 30 achievers featured on the Forbes Africa's annual under 30 list. We need to uh, uh, talk about youth entrepreneurship, you need to talk, uh, talk about the youth dividend and the youth bulge. These have become fashionable terms, but we need to really seriously address these issues. And the only way to do it is by encouraging uh, entrepreneurship on the continent, uh, by en encouraging young people. And it is these young people that will incorporate other generations as well in their businesses. So it's very important. Uh, this list is extremely important in my view because it, 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 it talks to the youth directly and in talking to the youth you're also talking about the future, you're talking addressing uh, AI, you're addressing robotics, you're addressing the fourth industrial revolution and the fifth industrial revolution that's coming up. Showcasing the future is very important for us. Africa is a young continent and if you just look at the, the, the stats in terms of what we should, uh, we have, we sh what we should basically look forward to. Um, if we don't showcase and if we don't um, progress in terms of how we develop and support and mentor the youth and the, the sort of young and upcoming disruptors and innovators, we're going to be missing that, uh, that beat. So this type of an, uh, conference is very important for us in terms of you know, making sure that we follow that mandate. I have the great pleasure to call upon an exceptional individual, Mr. Rakesh Wahi the founder of and the vice chairman of the ABN group, which includes Forbes Africa and CNBC Africa. So he deserves a very, very big round of applause. The generation that we have today, the young generation in their 20s, are the ones that are challenging every aspect of business. They don't accept the status quo. When I was growing up, you know, it was a very different world. We believed or accepted whatever was told to us by our elders. Uh, the youngsters today don't accept that status quo. They are disrupting everything. Every business is turning on its head. And it's largely because of the innovative minds of the younger generation. They are using technology in a manner that was unprecedented. These youngsters are the ones who've got to learn how to dream about the future. You're sitting at the bullock cart of your generation. Blockchain that is being talked about today is going to be the bicycle of your generation. So what I'd like you all to do today is sit down and dream a bit about what the future is going to be and the opportunities that you're going to be looking at in the future because that's where we are heading. Today, of course, would be absolutely nothing if it were not for our incredible and major key sponsor, you can see back there, Capitech. So may I please request on stage Mr. Francois Vivius, who is the executive of marketing and communications of Capitec, to welcome us all here today. Mr. Francois. We know we operate in a world and an environment where in South Africa there's a 27% um, unemployment rate, but in the youth market in South Africa, there's a 50% unemployment rate. And we know if we want to change that, we're not going to change it by doing things the conventional way. We are going to change it by challenging the norm, by applying new innovative thinking, and that comes from you. That comes from the youth. So our message to you and our message today is to say Capitec Bank, as partner with Forbes, is celebrating your ability, but more than that, we're celebrating and using this as a platform for you to inspire, to motivate, to drive change, to disrupt our 
are a norm to disrupt the status quo and mostly to inspire hundreds of millions other youth in the rest of Africa because that's the only way that we will change this continent and that we will build to build towards a better future. So now we move on to where it all started because we essentially we know that it's not about the destination but more about the journey. So in our next segment right now we have three entrepreneurs each from Forbes Africa's under 30 list from 2018. And they all have one particular thing in common. Where they all starters started is in the comfort, or the discomfort rather, of their own garages. I'd move from my comfort zone to the unknown. From the upcycling of plastics to the storage, pre-processing, and transportation of tires and tire material. I could not distinguish one tire from the next, and I still couldn't change my own car yet today, but I just couldn't resist the challenge. As Masayoshi san once said, it would require enormous expertise for Amazon to win at every category. Do you think McDonald's could be number one in hamburgers, Chinese food, and seafood? It's important to recognize your expertise and the next person's expertise and how these can be harnessed and used to achieve what you set out to achieve as a team. I make my first matric farewell dance dress for my cousin. It's a success and right there in my bedroom I start creating more dresses and SAB uniforms for promo girls. My parents allow me to take over the garage which we paint white. Uh, we use a base primer because I can't actually afford real paint. And I run my business from there for the next couple of years. I now have three employees working out of my house and we've been featured in many magazines and we've made our first six-figure paycheck. I'd like to sum up my story by saying at any given time, you're faced with challenges and many reasons why you should give up. And on that day in 2007, when a 17-year-old decided to make the best of what life threw at her, I shaped my future. The first business that I started was um, a kind of digital music, com uh, music company, multimedia company. Um, I had a, a radio studio uh, and did some recording and also did digital music distribution for, for upcoming artists. It helped me really see how every industry will change. And um, I used what I learned there to then get into other industries. I then founded the first tech company, Cybata, and the music business became a side piece. But a few months after that, I worked on a project called Ryovic. Um, we built an insurance platform uh, with a co-founder of mine. And, you know, a few months after that, luckily the, in 2015, October, uh, RMB's uh, Alpha Code was open, and we were part of the first startups that were invited to be part of that. And that was my official move out of the garage step out of the garage into you know, proper working environment where I could literally disrupt a, um, a real you know, industry. So, yeah, a um, few months after getting into the space, the story has changed. Um, I'm one of the real disruptors in the fintech space in the country with international recognition and we're doing great things. Now the next segment is the one that we call the Live Better Talks, which are moving accounts from members of the Forbes Africa's under 30 class of 2018. My life, the struggle, the grieving, the sorrow, the pain I went through, I now see those were my turning grounds. Those were the fire that molded me to the person I am today. Because every time when there's no food, I have to find food. So I became a solution solver. I always find solution. Who am I today? I'm Aliko Dangote. I'm the Mansa Musa of my generation. I'm Paul Hagami. 
I'm every dream that an outcast child once thought it's impossible. My name is Isa Yunge. I'm 20 years old from Tanzania. I'm the founder and CEO of Soma Apps Technologies, an innovative tech startup in Tanzania that is using mobile technologies to build solutions for the African challenges and problems. We are the first startup in Africa to work on wearables, Soma Fit. I am, I am Forbes Africa under 30. Thank you. Our population is beyond 1 billion. Right now, we live on oil and gas, if you want to believe. Our oil and gas is about 3.6 trillion worth. Infrastructure development in Africa is about 400 billion. Agriculture is about 50 billion. Today, everywhere in the world, they are preaching green solution. Our oil and gas will know what, what we have today. The value will drop, considering electric cars coming up everywhere. Now I am scared. In the next five, 10 years, the poverty index in Africa is going to increase. We cannot live on 50 billion agriculture if we are complaining at 3.6 trillion oil and gas right now today. I'm challenging you all. What can you do to change this? You have the statistics today. There's a problem coming. We need to innovate. We don't need to innovate for Africa again. Today, we need to start innovating Africa itself. We have resources. We have talent. I've met fantastic people. We've discussed things. What can you do to change the story? For me, my passion is entrepreneurship. Technology is my true, is my tool. And my mandate is to change Africa nation by nation. If you're going through something at the moment, if it's difficult, if people are saying no, if you're not getting funding, if your job is not the most amazing job in the world, if there's family problems, if there's relationship, restoration, whatever it is going on, nothing lasts forever. Everything is seasonal. It means that it will end. The pain will end. The hurt will end. But it also means that nothing lasts forever. So if you have an opportunity, you need to seize it. You need to take it, and you need to constantly innovate. And that's something that I've had to learn in terms of my business, that every moment that I have, if I can use it, I will use it. Because what's the worst that will happen? I am very Shaba. I'm 29 years old, owner of a multi-award-winning, multinational engineering consulting firm in South Africa. And I am part of Forbes 30 Under 30 in business. When the Forbes Under 30 Cavtech Meetup returns, the Under 30s meet a robot from the not so distant future. Some of SA's most successful artists share their stories. And once the meetup is over, our Under 30s party the night away. All this and more, keep watching. Before the break, the Fools Under 30 Cavtech Meetup brought attendees some of the hottest content, ranging from disruption to celebrity interviews and pure inspiration. Next on the lineup was a very special guest, Peppa, a smart robot making waves in South Africa, paid the meetup a visit. Wow, there are so many people here. Hello, Saubona, Dumala, Jambo, how are you all doing? Well, Pepper, this is the Forbes Africa Under 30 Capitec Meetup. Yes, yes, I was reading the digital edition this past week. Are the Under 30s here? Can I meet them? Do you think they will let me take their picture? Or what about a selfie with Questa? And on that tea? Maybe later? What do you think, Alex? Well, look, Pepper, just hang on a second. You know, <laughs> you can meet them all later. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Alex, you know I am under 30. Actually, I am only four years old. Is that okay? Can I stay? Of course.
caught up with the veterans of the uh, Forbes 30 Under 30 Club, and it's quite ironic that we're calling young people veterans, but of course, this is the class of 2016, and therefore, veteran is a fitting title. But everyone wants to know, what's up? What's happened since you featured on this list? How life has been for you? Nadav, the founder of Latest Sightings, this is a, a website that connects a people who go to the Kruger Park, who are looking to see wildlife and everything a game, uh, with where exactly to go, how to see it using technology. But how has life been for you since being featured on the list, the youngest guy, I must add, at 19, who made the list? Thank yes. You, um, so, yeah, when I, when I first joined the list, um, Later Science is all about like just sharing amazing content and helping people see amazing sightings in, in different safari, you know, safari places around South Africa and Africa. Um, and I think the where, where we changed a lot was uh, because of Forbes was when, was when I was invited to the Forbes Summit in Boston. And, you know, just seeing the different types of entrepreneurs there and the different ways that they do business and, you know, in terms of our content, they really content hungry there. And so we actually managed to close a lot of deals there. Thank goodness, just thanks to Forbes and, and that was amazing. But in terms of how business has changed and you know what we what we realize is if you know these game reserves are so fully booked years in advance. Um, and so using technology, we can actually tell the second things open up and tell people who want to go to the game reserve that their dates that they want have opened up and are available and they end up booking. And, you know, the conversion rate on, on those kind of sales are like 70%. So it's really exciting, you know, how we find technology and, and using that, they get to go to the game reserves and then share more sightings and, and give us more content to go viral. And, you know, in terms of viral, why, why it's so important for us is um, when someone shares something amazing and it goes viral, they can earn through it. So we have people, whether it's game rangers who don't earn that much by doing their job, you know, if their video gets like 50 million views, they can earn hundreds of thousands of rands. And so it's, it's really exciting to be able to, to drive that more. And of course, what you didn't add is in 2016, your website was one of the most viewed YouTube channels in South Africa. Now it is the top yeah. YouTube viewed channel in South Africa. So, wow. yeah, so right now it's uh, the most viewed South African channel in the world. I um, mean, every second we'll reach like six people. So we've, we've got over like 700 million views and uh, it's, it's quite exciting. Um, <laughs> Yeah. And Neku, pleasure to meet the uh, first uh, black Apollo technopreneur I've ever met in my life. I don't know if you guys have met Apollo technopreneur. <laughs> you, of course, were also the first uh, black woman to play a professional Apollo here on the African continent. Fantastic. If, so, if she's looking familiar to you guys, there you go. <laughs> yes. If she's looking familiar to you guys, it's because it's, it's not all brains, there's beauty there, and of course you were on the cover of the 2016 Forbes magazine, but how has life been since then? Um, it's, 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 I mean, it's been amazing. We've had ups and downs, but that's the entrepreneurship life. I think the, you know, being selected to be part of the Forbes list, it was almost a, a responsibility. It, it puts on you to help other people. Um, I really believe in, when I move back to Africa, I really believe in noblesse oblige, which means nobility obligates you to, to give back. And so now I'm working for the Meltwater Foundation, and what we do is we find aspiring entrepreneurs, we train them, and then if we um, like their business ideas, we invest up to a quarter of a million dollars for 20% equity. And I've just found the most, you know, inspiring and inspiring entrepreneurs from around Africa and the people I'm meeting in this room, uh, you know, it's mind blowing. And that's, you know, why we do this. It's just because of, you know, you guys. <laughs> Now, as has been painted, the synopsis of today's conversation is focused on millennials and reverse mentorship, or perhaps a concept called holacracy, which is you perhaps engaging with someone who's almost 
perhaps as old as your parents. Now, we know that those conversations are already tough enough to have at home when you're trying to have a tough conversation about uh, the things that happen in life, but in the workplace where there are additional dynamics involved, that can add a lot more pressure. So that's exactly what we'll get into with our panelists today and promise that you will hopefully have some insight that you can walk away with today and implement in your own day-to-day -day activities and in some of the um, uh, corporate initiatives that you participate in. Francois, I'll start off with you. Uh, you naturally, coming from a bank like Capitec, and for many of you in the audience who aren't familiar with the names like Yanni Mouton as well as uh, Michel Leroux, these are essentially the founding fathers of Capitec Bank. They're well respected, they're billionaires too, so perhaps if you're banking with Capitec, you might be following in the right steps. But this also speaks to an interesting dynamic where we see individuals who are from the baby boomer generation and even older speaking to a younger audience from a corporate representation point of view and balancing that act. How does Capitec get it right? And of course, maybe we can also allude to some of the input that you put in there, given that you are one of the youngest executive members of the team at Capitec who influences strategy there. I think it's an interesting s situation we find ourselves in, which was not by design. It, it was really happened when Capitec was founded. It was based on what is the need in the market. And, and as we grew, we grew to be the bank of youth in South Africa. We really, most of our clients are youth. And, um, and, and most youth in South Africa bank with Capitec. And what we've seen in the leadership in, within Capitec is a, there's a slowly a leadership change happening. So I've been on the executive committee for two years. Um, I was 33 when I joined, and on average, the rest of the committee is 15 years older than I am. Sure. Similarly, I have a bunch of uh, really smart and innovative people in marketing, ranging from 53 to 20-something. And there's a couple of the 20-somethings here, and, and often they're the guys that lead the thinking in marketing. They're the people that come with the new ideas, the innovations. And, and maybe that's, that's the way that corporates today should start thinking about it, is that there's no competition between the youth and the older hats in the business, but maybe different roles to play, where youth becomes the innovation and thought leaders. And the 50-year-olds are the custodians of the purpose and the why of the company, the values, and the custodians of people and leadership development. This panel is about the creative economy. These are the people that we sing to their songs, we dance to their music, we read their books, we wear their clothes. Oh, wow. They are the people that we love to follow. People we like to emulate when they buy shoes, we also buy shoes. When they laugh a certain way, maybe sometimes we do. So we just want to know how do they actually become such influencers? And how do they become Forbes under 30s? There's so many artists and entertainers that we have in Africa, but those two were part of our creatives list. So Anati, let me start with you. How does one become a creative of note that people oh. know exists and they buy into? I mean, it, it really starts off with the work. I wouldn't go around calling myself a creative of note. I feel like I'm still trying to cultivate what I'm creating. You know, I feel like everything that we do is just a manifestation of our thoughts. You know, it's like magic. You know, if Cuesta gets into the booth and he does a verse, it's just something from God. It's like just a manifestation of his thoughts. So you can never really put a formula down to it. You know, it's just energy that flows between us and the people, you know, and once, once the people recognize the energy and they, they fall into it, then there's a connection. So I feel like that's how it works. Yeah, this, this is one of the most difficult industries to get into. I mean, people work, write music, do demos for years and years and nothing ever happens. Questa, yeah. you've been doing this for about 15 years. It took, it took a long, long time for people to buy into your brand and your music. Yeah. How did you change that narrative to make sure that people start listening to you? Um, I think the first thing I did was I, I sort of, I grew into myself, right? Um, I think when I started rapping, I mean, I fell in love with the art of rapping and the art of making music. Um, but as I was making it, I wanted to sound like so-and-so. And, -so, and I wanted to do what so-and-so was doing because they are my role models and things. But I think as soon as I was okay and content with who Senzo was, yeah. right? It became easier for Cuesta to, to connect to a timbre you know, and a Catherine and a Sfiso, you know, because now I'm talking about things that I'm actually going through, you know, um, and that people that listen to the music might also be going through. I'm so glad I missed the after party, said no one ever. 
With that said, it was time to end off an inspiring day at one of Johannesburg's hottest clubs, Onyx, for the official Forbes Under 30 Capitec Meetup After Party, featuring DJ Capital, Twins on Deck and Ryan the DJ. That's it from the 2018 Forbes Africa Under 30 Capitec Meetup. Make sure you're part of the event in 2019 by following at Under 30 Meetup on Twitter or visit under30meetup.co.za for more info.